Hi, I'm Lowell Sun reporter Melissa Hansen, and I'm here in Westford at Witches Woods to learn how the makeup team turns 200 people from regular actors into ghoulish creatures. So, um, to do our fake blood, which is an after effect of what we're going to be working with, mm -hmm. but to do our fake blood, we use a mixture of k syrup, chocolate syrup, and food coloring. Okay. Okay. So this is what the color we would use for like an old blood, you know, something that's kind of growing. <laughs> so you can see those colors. So see the three yeah, different the variations? Right exactly. So this would be like your older blood. Mm -hmm. This would be a newer blood. I'd actually add more red to this if I wanted this tone. Um, and then this would be a kind of an in-between. All right, so we're gonna do just a layer of the glue right now with the water. You want like water. a thin layer or? Well, we're gonna build it up. Okay. So, but we wanna be consistent. We don't want it to be too, too thin. I mean, I know it looks thin now, but that's because of the water, right? So this is so that it will grab what we're trying to do. And we can overlap it, just like if you're doing paper mache. And you wanna add those wrinkles, different effects of the skin. So this is our first base layer. And we're going to think about it um, going from the inside out. So we're going to build up over this. So this is actually the skin that's going to show from inside the wound. Okay. okay. Does it need to be 100% dry? Not really, because we're going to be adding paint to it anyways. Um, but to pull it apart, you do want to make sure it's pretty dry. Okay. Um, which is why with the tissue paper it's good because you don't you don't really need to worry about it taking forever to dry mm -hmm. because it's so thin anyways. So what we're doing now is we're creating a hole and you know when our skin rips it's not necessarily straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't really want that straight edge line. So I'm actually going to play with this a little, rip it out. And we have multiple layers lifted up in here, right? So we don't want to go directly down to your skin line. So we have to gauge where we're at with the layers. And we have about, I think it's seven layers of skin. So you figure as long as you're not completely down to the skin line on the whole, so you now have your cut wound, mm -hmm. right? And we can actually um, add these additional markings in there as well. But again, you want to be able to Okay, and we don't need all of this on here, so you can actually pull some of this off. Because, you know, when you have a rip in your skin, it doesn't necessarily all stay attached. So what this will do is it'll give the effect that it's a deeper wound, almost like a hole. Doing a little eye trick with color. Or like the rough. Okay. So now we have those base colors in for that black. We really want to get it in those crevices because you don't want any of the white showing through underneath because um, it kind of ruins the effect. So the more darker color, farther in, the better. Um, if you look at your arm now, you can actually see that you have blues and greens and purples, um, which is not something that we normally see because right. we see things as a whole. But if you were to take a square piece of paper and cut it out and look in that one spot, you can see a variation of different colors. All right, so I'm going to add the bruising into this. It'll give us some nice, deep irritation in our skin. And we stipple it on because um, it gives it the best effect and it doesn't make it look um, unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So you want more of a realistic tonality. So you did yellow first and now you're going in with a darker exactly. color. Exactly. Yep. And you can do it either way. Um, this is just to make sure I'm getting all of that paper color cut covered. You know, it's whatever you decide. I mean, mm -hmm. if you end up wanting to have blue skin, you know, with purple um, blood or pink blood, you know, it, it's completely up to you. It, mm -hmm. I highly recommend using your imagination, not necessarily going with what you see in a movie or, yeah. you know, things like that. I mean, because that's the fun about Halloween, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a time of year where we can be silly and have fun with it. And the good thing about these sponges is you can actually add multiple colors on them. Yeah. Right? And use different edges. So we're just going in with some irritation. 
Maybe some insection. Nice. Yep. <laughs> and you want to keep the tissue paper kind of flappy so it looks exactly. more open. Exactly. Yeah. It also help hold the blood too once we put the blood in there. Okay. And again, you, you don't want to box it out. We always call it the bullseye cut, where if you have the cut and then you just paint around in a bullseye format, it never looks real, mm -hmm. right? And our bruising never bruises in a bullseye format. I mean, you have the initial bruise, but once it starts to heal, it travels under your skin. Because that's what a bruise is, is it's blood trapped within the layers of your skin. So if you think about it, well, I guess we do a little science as well. Yeah. You know, so. We'll just double check it, make sure it's dry, okay? And then also add to the infection that you have in your hand. So, you know, pus when it comes out, it's got that whitish, yellow, yeah. disgusting, gross <laughs> colors. We're gonna keep adding it and it's gonna drip down your hand. So gravity is our friend. We use <laughs> yeah. gravity to do these things because it I'm gives slowly. us that great effect. And you know, you think about where is it gonna come out? So I'm actually gonna have you lift your hand and bring it downward because normally when we stand, we have our hand down. Right? Yeah. So this is where this is gonna now bleed on our fingers onto the paper and you blended all the paint and stuff beyond exactly. this pastry paper yep. exactly yeah so you Great. my dear have a wound from mom's kitchen <laughs> that's excellent and again just let it drip <laughs> you actually have one drip that we can help it along okay all right there you go there's Beautiful. your one drip so this is the tiny tiny bit we're just going to like put a that teaspoon. in there. Yeah, not even. A half a teaspoon. It all depends on the size of the hole and the cut, right? So we're just going to add a little bit of this. And just like you do with a volcano, and of course, again, you need to have adult supervision for this part. <laughs> and I'm just going to use a tiny bit, teeny tiny bit of vinegar. That looks gross and unlike itself. <laughs> Okay. All right. So this go. is our natural reaction. I'm hoping this works. I just need to have you, actually, if you, there you go, right there. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> so now we have exploding, gross, disgusting. Yeah. And you can eat, actually keep adding baking soda. That's so gnarly. <laughs> And we'll just put it in, we'll do it again. And a little bit. Oh, that's really gross. Okay, so that's your gnarly cut. Okay, so now we're gonna start with your chin and get that lined up. So this is gonna feel a little weird. And one of the things that I'll actually be putting on you around your eyes is um, it's uh, baby powder. But what it does is it helps set the adhesive so that your skin doesn't stick to itself. Some of that. Okay, so I just need you to hold this for a sec. So what it'll do is it'll adhere itself to that powder versus your skin-to-skin um, -skin contact. Okay. 